Agile is a user-centric approach for delivering high-quality products for customers. No doubt, user stories form the basis of Agile framework. Hello everyone, I am Riti Kaori from Management List. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. In this video, I will be talking about user stories. Let's see what all is covered in this video. So let's get started with what are user stories. Well, a user story is the smallest unit of work to be done which carries a certain business value with it. A user story is created to capture a product functionality from user's perspective. Also, these user stories should be in non-technical language. An example could be, let's say you're working in a project to create a web application for a clinic and one of the requirements provided by a dietitian who proposes a diet plan could be displaying all the food allergies of a patient on the top right of the patient detail screen. Now, the product owner needs to express this requirement in simpler form so that teams understands what has to be done and what business value it brings to the users. Let's have a look at the user story format first. Taking the same example, a user story could be written as, As a dietitian, I want to see all the food allergies of a patient on the top right of the patient information screen so that the right diet plan can be proposed. Hence, a user story is short and straightforward description of what needs to be done from the perspective of someone who needs this functionality. Keep in mind that user stories are short and details are added later on. We just talked about the format. Let's see what a user story's format comprises of. Well, a user story format consists of three words, who, what and benefit. For whom the work needs to be done, what work needs to be done and benefit of doing this work. Putting all these together will form a user story. Let's again look into the previous example. In this user story, dietitian is for whom the work needs to be done. Displaying food allergy on the top right of the patient information screen is what needs to be done. And proposing the right diet is the user's benefit from this functionality. Now we know the format of a user story. Let's also see how to write user stories with perfection. A very effective method which was offered by Ron Jeffries is the three C's principle. The three C's comprises of card, conversation and confirmation. Card here symbolizes that a user story should be small enough to be expressed on a small 3 cross 5 inch card yet effective. Conversation. Once the user story is written, these user stories are then opened to have more discussions, conversations around these requirements. Many meetings like backlog grooming, sprint planning, release planning, etc. form the stage for these conversations and information exchange on user stories. The focus is to have more of ongoing conversations and less of detailing the requirements up front. Let's talk about the third C, that is confirmation. This C is to build user story acceptance criteria. Now, before moving ahead, let's see what is an acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria of any user story are the conditions that should be fulfilled to satisfy the user or product owner that this story is completed. Teams have the acceptance criteria to be fulfilled as their definition of done. We can also say that these are the conditions of contentment on the user story card. These conditions can be written on the backside of the card. Confirmation or acceptance criteria should always be a part of user story. Again, looking into the previous example, let's discuss what could be the possible acceptance criteria 
for this user story. Firstly, the food allergies should be sequenced in a descending order of the harm they can do to the patient. Second, the food allergies should be highlighted in red color. And there can be many more. With that, let's discuss another effective method which can be used to write good user stories. This method is represented by INVEST, where I stands for independent. Try to write stories which are independent of each other, that is, one story should not have the dependency on other stories and whenever required can be pulled from the backlog and worked upon. There are times when it is not possible to have a story completely independent, which is okay, but the idea here is to minimize the dependencies. Next is N, which stands for negotiable. User stories should have a basis to be negotiated in terms of details. User story in itself holds the crux of the requirement and should be open to be negotiated with product owner or end user. Product owner can specify the requirements and then the team decides on how to work on it based on the negotiations they do. Next is V, which stands for valuable. No user story should be considered appropriate for working unless it adds some value to the business. The more the user story adds value to end user and customer, the more priority is given to that user story. E stands for estimable. User stories should be such that the team is able to do some kind of estimation on it. Therefore, keeping the user story a small unit of work makes it easier to be estimated. If atomicity of user story is maintained, it is very convenient for the team to pull it for work. There is no point of writing a user story which cannot be estimated. Next comes S, which stands for small. User stories should be sized appropriately. That is, they should be small in size to be worked upon. For example, if a team is using Scrum methodology, then Scrum duration is generally of 2-3 to three weeks. Therefore, a user story should be small enough to be completed in days. Next is T, which stands for testable. All user stories should have a test criteria. How can one say that a user story is done or not done if we are not able to test it? After completion of each user story, the team should be able to test it and determine if the user story has been implemented successfully or not. There should be a clear yes or no after the testing has been completed. Hence, INVEST helps the team to write effective user stories. With that, let's now move on and see how user stories fit into Scrum. In Scrum, user stories are molded properly. Scrum methodology uses product backlog to keep the list of what needs to be done. This product backlog comprises of user stories, epics, and themes. In Scrum, sprint planning meetings are done to discuss more on user stories in order to add details to the requirement, decide the definition of done, and discuss their priority for near future. Also, estimations in Scrum are done for user stories. Then, a sprint backlog is prepared which gets pulled from the product backlog. Sprint backlog is nothing but a prioritized list of user stories which have to be worked upon in upcoming sprint pulled from product backlog. User stories also provide a mechanism to get a high level view of the product using story mapping technique. User story mapping is a visual representation of product backlog using different user stories to get a bigger picture. So that was all I wanted to discuss in this video. And now we know that user stories are the smallest unit of work in Agile. User stories should follow a certain format when written 
and should have a criteria to be estimated and tested. I hope you like this video. If yes, please press like, subscribe for more such videos and thank you for watching.